Hi, everybody. It's Adele Frizzell, and I'm here today with Tiffany Buck. And today we're going to be talking about willpower and inspiration and motivation and discipline because they're all a little bit different and they really are required for success with your goals. So we hope that this is a conversation and that you have lots of questions and you can engage because we're going to have be, have, be having a little bit of a philosophical conversation about the nuances and differences between those things. So motivation. Lots of people work with a coach because they feel that they need motivation and accountability. But motivation is fleeting. I mean, how many times have you set yourself a worthy goal and you felt this huge initial rush of excitement that comes with the anticipation of accomplishing it? And how many times has that motivation dwindled in just a few short weeks? Think about New Year's, Mm -hmm. January 1st, everyone's got goals and they join a gym and things like that. And then come February 1st, the gym is empty. Mm -hmm. Motivation dwindles usually in two to three weeks, especially when results don't come as quickly as people hope for, or if it's more difficult than they thought it would be. So whether it's losing weight or getting fit or starting a new business or even improving your relationship, work is required. And anything worthwhile requires commitment and dedication. And this is why it is so vital that you develop your mindset instead of looking for ways to constantly motivate yourself. It really is about turning inward instead of outward. A new gym outfit, a workout buddy, a coach, These external things won't provide lasting motivation. Motivation really comes from within. Mm -hmm. You have to be your own motivation, which means developing your humility, your patience, your capacity for hard work, your grit, your discipline. And it's about embracing the sometimes lonely path to success because mindset is really what separates winners from losers achievers from dreamers. Mindset trumps motivation every single time. I think that you hit a key point right there. Mm -hmm. You mentioned that you have to separate yourself a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, A lot of people, they, they start this and they have all these goals, but just because you have goals does not mean that everyone around you has similar goals. And that's when it can be really difficult, especially if your goal is, I mean, let's face it, we are a Um, fitness and wellness community here. If your goals are bringing you into the world of fitness and wellness and everyone around you do do not have the same goals, then there might be times where you want to hang out with the same people, but they want to do things that don't fit your goals. So then what, what happens to your motivation at that point? That's where all these other factors that we're going to talk about come into play here, because sometimes we have to say, this is something that I've been saying a lot lately, is you ha- we have to say no to certain things in order to say yes to ourselves. Yeah, 100%. And our environment and social circles matter a great deal. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about motivation versus inspiration. Okay. There is, <laughs> so I did a little background research with Tiffany on this because like, we were asking ourselves, what is the difference between motivation and inspiration? Mm-hmm. I would love to hear in the comments what you think the difference is, because there are people out there. There are people with PhDs who are completely disagreeing on the definition of motivation and inspiration. Mm-hmm. We can give you an example. Um, I read something that says, oh, inspiration is largely artistic you see something, it's deeper, it's more emotional. And then I read something else that said, well, motivation is, is, it's something that drives us forward, right? It's, it's more mental. And motivation is deeper than inspiration, because inspiration is fleeting. And it's like, but then somebody else is saying, you know, inspiration is what lasts forever, you need to feel deeply inspired, and then you'll do something for the rest of your life. I can't find any agreements. So I would love to know from people watching this, Mm -hmm. what do you think the difference between motivation and inspiration is? 
And if you are watching, say hi. Uh, yeah. well, I'll tell you that in a second. But uh, right now, Patty said hi. So hi, Patty. Thanks for joining us. Love that you're here. Um, so Patty, tell us what you, th I know you're a philosophical, what do you think is the difference between motivation and inspiration? I, I'd love to hear in the comments. There's no right or wrong here. So don't be afraid of like attempting a, def a definition. I, um, you asked me what I think. I think that inspiration is definitely more on the emotional side of things. You see something, you get this idea in your head and you're like, how do I how do I reach this? How do I do it? Maybe it's somebody lifting a lot of weight. Maybe it's somebody um, doing a competition, running a marathon. Maybe it's someone who has amazing artistic abilities and they're able to paint these beautiful landscape uh, portraits or, or um, paintings. It, it doesn't matter what it could be. It could be anything, but it's once you see it, you're like, I want to be able to do that. How do I do that? And then that's when the motivation comes in is you're like, I need to do X, Y, and Z this many times a week to do this. Okay. So I'm going to do X, Y, and Z mm. without the, I feel like without the inspiration, without that initial, holy crap, that's really empowering. I want to achieve that without that moment, then the motivation is never going to align up with it. So you're less likely to have the next. Mm. Oh no, Tiffany, you froze on me. So I hope it's not my computer steps to get there. Um, does that make sense? You are, are you back? Yeah. You froze on me. I, I, I don't know. You froze happened. on me. Oh, okay. Well, I hope we're going to be okay. I, so what I'm getting from you then is that, and I agree with you. Inspiration is this very emotional, mm -hmm. almost a full body experience that people have. And it comes from outside themselves and like you said, it could be artistic, it could be a piece of music, a piece of art, or seeing somebody do something that just blows their mind. And now they get excited about doing something. And then the motivation is more a mental thing, like, okay, how do I do that? I'm going to break it down. My computer laptop is dying, so let me know if, uh, if I freeze. But... Um, yeah, I think it's on its last legs. I can hear the. Hard I can hear it now. You asked oh, me earlier if I can hear it. Now it's I can very hear. distracting. <laughs> Hopefully, we make it through. Hang in there, baby. Just twenty more minutes. <laughs> so, <laughs> but basically, that so the motivation comes next after the inspiration. But I think sometimes people do miss the inspiration piece and go into motivation. Let me give you an example. Um, let's say somebody had a heart attack recently. And they got a real big scare and now they're motivated to take care of their health, but it's not a joyous thing. They're not inspired to really, some people might be inspired to be like, oh, I get a second chance at life. Wow. But can you hear it? Sorry. I can hear you more than I can hear it. I think it's distracting you more okay. than I. Okay, good. So, so some people might go straight to motivation because they have an intellectual reason to do something. When, but they're lacking the emotion. So without that emotional component, they might actually run out of gas on it. I think the emotional buy-in is really important. So Patty did answer us over here. She mm -hmm. said, uh, I find inspiration more fleeting. Motivation seems more practical to her. And it can be a trap to wait for inspiration. I'm more embracing the idea that inspiration can follow action. That's interesting. It's interesting how we all have different viewpoints of what follows what. Yeah, I think I think Patty's on to something there in the sense that, and we tell people this in the Transformer program, don't wait for inspiration, don't wait for motivation. Actually, motivation often comes from action. When you take action, then you can start getting, you might find yourself remotivated. So for example, going for a run or doing a workout, even when you don't feel like it can actually make you want to do it again. But is that more inspiration or is that more getting into willpower and discipline at that point? It takes some willpower to do what you don't want to do. Exactly. And then the motivation can come back. So we were, you know, we were saying like, let's say going to the gym becomes a grind after a few months. And you feel like results aren't coming fast enough. And you've really been trying to grow your shoulders and your delts. And then all of a sudden you catch yourself in the mirror and you're like, whoa, I'm getting shoulders. Right. Yeah. So now the inspiration is back again. 
and the motivation is back, Mm -hmm. but it's cyclical. Yeah, it ebbs and flows. And so so it requires action to get it back. You can't wait to get motivation back. You can't just be passive. You got to do the thing. But I still think that that comes back to you first have that inspiration. You have to have that first thing that triggers you to make, want to make that change. And once you have that inspiration, maybe it's, maybe it is the doctor's appointment. But the inspiration is fleeting for that example, um, as is the motivation. Just because you get inspired initially, I don't think that that inspiration stays the same for the rest of your life. I do think that your goals change. And as your goals change, what inspires you changes as well. What inspired me when I was 20 does not inspire me today. So I think that that's a realistic way to look at it as well. If I had to put it in an order, I would say inspiration, motivation, and then you have your willpower, and then you finally get to the discipline. I totally agree. So let's talk about willpower. Willpower to me is this sudden burst of focus energy. It requires a lot of effort because now you're grinding through things. You're using your willpower. You're using your willpower to have like to maybe not overeat or say no to that donut or go do that workout when you really don't feel like it, which you know, you can only do that for so long. Mm -hmm. Willpower. It's interesting because studies on willpower show something. We used to believe it was a very finite thing. You started the day with your cup full and by the end of the day, your cup was empty. And so was your willpower and you were more likely to give into temptation. But research is showing that people who believe that willpower is finite it is finite for them. And people who believe that willpower is not limited it's not limited for them. So this is a very personal mindset thing. So there is some research that indicates willpower is not a finite resource. I don't know what you agree or disagree with that. I, I kind of feel like once your willpower is no longer finite, then you're more in the discipline stage of things and not in the willpower stage of things anymore. Because I think that there's different things. Because I mean, when I think about willpower, I think about you're working in an office setting, somebody brings in a tray of cupcakes and you know, I mean, I just started this diet. Of course, the first day of my diet, somebody brings in all these cupcakes. I really just want one cupcake. No, I'm going to wait. Oh, I really want it. No, I'm going to wait. Oh, I really want it. No, I'm going to wait. That is willpower. But when you get into the discipline side of things, somebody brings in these cupcakes and you're like, I've already planned out my day. Yeah, those look good. However, they don't fit my thing. And you kind of just move on and forget about it. It's not constantly on your mind anymore. Whereas with willpower, it's constantly there just banging at your brain saying, I'm here, see me. And with discipline, you acknowledge it. You acknowledge your reaction and your emotional and physical response to it. And you kind of move on. Yeah, I think discipline is more of an identity thing. Mm -hmm. It's like, I'm, I'm a person who just doesn't eat cupcakes when she says she's not going to eat cupcakes or when she's on a diet or, you know, uh, willpower is like, yeah, it's white knuckling it sometimes. So I do think willpower can be, it, it is, um, it fluctuates. Mm-hmm. I see it in myself, right? I'm not a robot. If I don't get enough sleep, if I'm stressed, I'm more prone to emotional eating, eating more carbs, overeating, that kind of thing. Um, so lack of sleep really plays a role environment. If there are cupcakes in the house, I'm obviously more likely to eat them because I'm triggered to eat them. Um, social circles, like you were talking about earlier, really matter. Mm -hmm. Like if the norm for your social circle is to go out and eat wings and drink beer and overindulge every Friday night, you're more likely to be tempted to do that. If your norm is on a Friday, you're with buddies who go hit the gym, you're more likely to do that. So it's good to find a social circle where the norm are healthy behaviors. Mm -hmm. It's not weird to that group to do healthy things. Um, Your environment, for sure, we talked about removing triggers, maybe having your workout bag at the door. So you're kind of like already halfway there. You know, you don't have to now, oh, I got to pack and then go. No, you're packed. You're ready to go. It's just easier. You're removing the friction, right, of doing something. I think habits. Some people are in the habit of giving up. Mm -hmm. And when you are a person who has a habit of giving up for whatever rationale or good reason, uh, you're just more likely to give up again. 
So if you've kind of got a thing where you stop dieting after two weeks, watch out for that. Give yourself a rule. I'm not giving up this time. I'm going to go three weeks or four weeks because I do think well, it's a, it's like a mental muscle that you can get better at with time. That kind of reminds me a little bit of, I've been reading into 75 hard lately. And I don't, I don't agree with the extremes that 75 hard can tend to go to, but I do like the fact that you stick to something, you give yourself a time frame, you stick to something. And if you fall off, you kind of restart it. You're like, well, I made it to X day. Congratulations. I made it one day further. And you just keep trying until you're able to break that habit. And the only way that we're going to break a habit that we want to break is by practicing it and by acknowledging whether or not you were successful or whether or not you could have done a little bit better. And then the next time you do it, try to push it one day further. It doesn't have to be this huge. I can't go two weeks straight. Now I'm trying to go six months straight kind of deal. You don't want to, you know, make it too difficult to get to, but it's definitely something worth practicing and not giving up on. Even if you don't feel like you were hundred percent successful, if you're able to do one extra day than what you've done in the past, that's breaking the habit one day at a time. I agree with you, Tiffany, a hundred percent. Um, we can get stronger. We can get more resilient. We can build more discipline. <laughs> And things like that. And it's by doing different than before. You know, the Stoics say the obstacle is the way, meaning what typically challenges you, you've got to tackle that in order to keep making progress. That is the way. That is the way forward. It's the only way forward. Mm -hmm. So if we were talking about what corrodes uh, willpower, so, and we're kind of now talking about what builds up willpower, not giving up, things like that, know yourself right? If you've got kind of a, a social circle that isn't healthy, cultivate new relationships. If you are not getting enough sleep, it could be corroding your willpower. If you are really stressed, you're probably going to need to manage stress better because stress leads to stress eating for a lot of women. Um, the whole giving in thing, make a pact with yourself to not give up so fast. You know, these are the things which will help build more willpower and more discipline, which we want to talk about next. Yeah. So real fast, there are yeah. a couple of uh, comments here. Uh, Deanna said, when I'm in, uh, yes, when I'm in a rut, I find when I just do it, whatever that is, I have the inspiration to do it again because there is emotion tied to it. It's like, which comes first, the chicken or the egg? Yeah, I think, um, I think that, inspiration and motivation are the rocket fuel that mm -hmm. propel that rocket out of earth's orbit and into space. But after that, you need willpower and discipline to keep going on that journey. Yeah. And, and so now it is cyclical because you will become re-motivated and re-inspired if you keep at it, that the action leads to inspiration all over again, eventually. Yes. Um, what happens is you cannot rely on motivation forever. It is going to fade and you need that willpower to stay in the game. And then eventually you need a set of habits, which become automatic and a self identity, which is your discipline, which is I am a person who eats healthy and works out three times a week, no excuses. That's an identity. And if you read James Clear's book, Atomic Habits, it's excellent. We recommend it to everybody in the Transformer program. People have listened to that book twice even. Uh, I recommend the audio book. It is going to help you get your mind right. Because he talks a lot about identity. If you tell yourself, I'm a person who doesn't smoke, you're more likely to not smoke than somebody who says, I can't smoke. Or I, I'm, I'm not allowed to smoke. Mm -hmm. I think you that's know. a key point too, is saying I can't, or I'm not allowed to. As soon as you say the word, I can't, or I'm not allowed to sometimes for people, especially if you're like me and you're told you can't do something, you want to do it so much more. Um, and that's why that's one of the big reasons why we are big components of 
making your own decisions, making your own choices, making what fits your lifestyle and making that choice for yourself. For example, with food, we're not going to give you a food plan because we don't want to tell you what you can and cannot eat. That's your personal decision. And as soon as we say, oh no, you can't have this. What do you want? What do you want to do? You want to go out and get it generally. So by saying, by simply changing the way that you phrase things, by simply saying, I can't smoke or I don't, by saying, let me change it. Let's say I can't exercise. I'm too busy. Instead of saying that, how about we say, I have a very busy schedule, but if I practice some time management, I can put five minutes aside to go for a five minute walk. Those little phrases take you from the, this is not possible to how can I make this work? This is important to me. How can I fit it into my day? And that's the difference between um, motivation, which as soon as you realize, oh, I'm super busy, that motivation is gone to discipline saying, yes, I'm super busy, but this is important to me. How can I make it fit? You're muted. I think discipline is strategic. It is long-term. It is thoughtful. It is structured. And most of all, it is consistent. And that consistency is what leads to results long-term. And it leads to self-identity, which is much better than motivation to rely on. I think that's everything. Any, any questions or comments? Um, just, uh, Deanna said she loves listening to the logic and that you made some really good points. So thank you for that. Uh, if you guys have any questions, um, let us know. We're going to monitor the chat even after the live is over. You guys can come back and watch it later and ask any specific questions that you may have. Wonderful. All right. Well, thanks for the talk today. Uh, if you want to keep the conversation going in the comments, we will respond personally. We'd love to hear from you. All right. Stay disciplined. Have a Bye great guys. day.